them. Welcome to George Reviews. I am the 80s Transformers fan. Today on George Reviews, we'll be taking a look at another Generation 1 Transformers. More specifically, it is Hasbro reissue of Transformers Generation 1 Skywarp in the Transformers the movie line. Basically, this line is a repaint of the Generation 1 Transformer toys that they have been reissuing for 20 years now. And they paint them to look more like the cartoon. So here is the packaging for Skywarp. It is a windowless pa packaging still. The front of the packaging is designed to look like the Autobot shuttle to travel from Cybertron to Earth in the movie, which Megatron blew a hole in and Decepticons bore to attack the Autobots. The artwork of Skywarp in both modes is from Transformers Earthrise. You can see the panels folded up on the leg, just like the toy and the feet are designed from Transformers Earthrise toy, which will make an appearance in this video. Um, getting a hole in the shuttle, Skywarp like he's firing, both modes, side of the box continues, plastic free packaging, back of the box is a product shot of the toy within, this is a little bit better, this is sort of like a render, and right here we got a little bit of a bio of what was going on in Transformers the movie, you can pause that and read that, it's in multiple languages, we have a little bit of a tech spec down here from Transformers Generation 1 continuity, and we have his stat line, it's been shortened, we got what, strength, intelligence, speed, and firepower, it's been shortened from the original, and you can pause that, read that if you would like to. A bunch of warnings right there. It looks like Unicron back here. Side of the box is another product shot of the toy, Decepticon Skywarp. Nothing on the bottom. Let's get this guy open and take a look. Here's the last secret jet I needed for the original three. It took me a long time. I didn't pre-order this guy, so I missed him when he initially dropped. Here's Skywarp out of the packaging. Pinned to the cardboard. Nothing further in the box. When this guy was initially released, I missed out on him. Here is his instructions. And then it sold out on both. He's supposed to be a Walmart exclusive, but it's shared with HasbroPro.com. Instructions, we won't need those. So Skywarp popped back up on HasbroPost.com during the Black Friday weekend. I was able to get one at retail price. And here he is. And here we are. Sky warp out. And should be his accessories. But one thing I know I'm not gonna like is these long missiles that come with all the reissues in the United States for the Seeker Jets, and oh, that's awful. All right, let's get Sky Warp from his mid transformation state. Take the launchers. Oh, I have lusted for purple molded launchers for an eternity. If any of you guys ever seen my Generation 1 Skywarp video, you will know why. Start with his fist. And this time around, this may be purple ploy. Nope. <laughs> nope. I still don't understand why they did. They cast every fist to these guys in black plastic and painted them over. I still I, I don't get that for the life of me. And Skywar has his two fists. I'm gonna add his tail fins. Size of his leg. There's a left and a right. You really can't mess this up. Same thing for what are these the rudders on small tail fins. And these gorgeous purple launchers. Followed by these crappy giant purple missiles. I've always wanted purple missiles for my Skywarp. I wish Takara was still making these side by side with Hasbro. And I could have got a Takara version with standard small missiles. Still looks kind of cool though just to get them in the purple. And why it's two different purples, I don't even know. I don't even want to know. <laughs> you know, like what, what the heck happened here? So this is our Skywarp. Let's bring him closer. Take a look at his face. 
Looks to be painted pretty decently. I think he has the lightest of the faces. His face matches the like ghost gray on his chest. His eyes appear to be painted well. A lot of times my close-up shots will reveal imperfections that my eye cannot see. But to my naked eye, he has the best paint of any of the figures so far. Even the black of his head is a coat of paint. It's a black coat of paint with the red eyes and the white face. Looks pretty cool. Let's see how much he looks like the cartoon or the animated movie it's not going to be spot on it's the same head scope from the original toy so and you know the cartoon was an interpretation of that but it looks pretty good i like it taking a look at his chest the die cast chest it kind of missed on the paint and events um what the way my lighting is looks a little bit like shadow but if you can see it's not hitting in the corners that well of the vents next to his head the entire chest portion here is die cast he has some painted stripes across his cockpit. Missiles falling out. Again, his fists are painted. The, his inner arms is a purple plastic, which they should have continued down to the fists, which I don't even know. I just um, noticed something. I can see in the plastic separation right here that the launchers are not purple plastic. They are a black plastic painted purple, which kind of sucks. I'm used to the ring on the reissues right here being painted over. But I would have thought this entire piece would have been purple plastic. Now the tab, the tabs are purple plastic because mostly because they actually match the actual um, missile. But it's bizarre to me. But continuing on, take a look at the rest of the paintwork on Skywarp. He has the printed on Decepticon logo, the printed on stripe on his wings. He has some printing from the vent down here on his legs. This is purple plastic. The feet are purple plastic with some white printing down here. And turn around. Not a lot going on on Skywarp, but he looks cool in these colors. I wish the figure itself had been a, like a, a gray, a charcoal gray. Still, we just get a, like a straight up black, which is kind of weird. But he still looks cool. He comes with the Megatron gun right here, which we knew he would because Starscream and Thundercracker came with it. And I said in the previous review, I said again, this was once so cool, but now it's like, okay, it's been done to death now. We could have got something different with Skywarp. Unlike Thundercracker, Skywarp actually wielded this a few times in the cartoon. Not in the movie, but in the cartoon. Or you could separate it, get into his hand, pretend like he's holding it holding a complete gun it would have been so cool if they gave these guys extra hands like an opening gripping hand or a gesturing hand just to make this release that much more special but they did not it's a straight up reissue of every star screen that's come before him in the united states for the past 10 years but it does look cool if you only got one if you're only into one of these guys and you're only in the sky warp you get your money's worth with this right here but if you got them all it's like eh. okay here's sky warp with the other two secret jets from this line as far as the megatron gun they're all the same except for maybe paint tolerances the gray is a little bit different on a couple of the guns but that could be just a sprayer that day and I know somebody might be inclined to just grab one and you might want the Megatron gun, but this is a collector's line. You know what I mean? And it's not for children today. This is based on a 1986 movie toy line with toys from the 80s. So, I mean, most people collecting these are pretty much going to get them all and we all have the same repetitive Megatron gun. Okay, other than the Megatron gun in this mode, Skywarp has a bit of articulation. His arm will 360 and move in and out. As far as the transformation will let it. Also, the wings are pegged in, so they, they're removable and they can rotate to your liking. You can tuck them in. I kind of let these out. You can tuck them in behind the rudders and pull them out like this. His feet have articulation. They fold up and fold away, or they can just fold a little bit. Kind of look like he's walking. You can move these pieces down here, but they're not truly part of articulation. His head won't move. You can move the cone, or if you swivel the entire cockpit, you can sort of kind of get him to look up and allow it. But it's Generation 1. There's not a lot of articulation going on. I'm not going to make fun of it, but that it is what it is. But his feature in this mode is that he can fire his missiles. Okay, while Generation 1 toys were not very articulated, but what they did do was transform. So we're going to remove the launchers. Oh, no, he's a parts former. <laughs> Move the fist. I'm going to try to leave everything else on. The other things can come off. I'm going to try to leave them on though. I'm going to take the nose cone and rotate it down and push it through 
the chest and waist area of the jet bring it up and lock it into position like that we're going to move the wings just a little bit we're going to get his arms up and around wait i'll tip the, the cone down just to here and bring the hands in arms in tuck them back here and then the cone locks them into place like that straighten out the wings turn these two right here and close up the feet we're going to bring our missiles back our launchers with missiles peg them into the wings and he has skywarp has one landing gear that attaches underneath here it is both plastic and die cast at the wheels and here we go the wheel spin the die cast wheel spin and here is our fully transformed skywarp just like we saw in this robot mode, not a lot going on. Simplistic paint. Uh, Decepticon logos right there. It looks good though. What it's, it does what it's supposed to do and look like the cartoon. They pulled it off very well. I just wish he had that charcoal gray to differentiate himself further from the Generation 1 version of Skywarp. Now in this mode, again, we saw the landing gear. You can put him down. He rolls. He came with a uh, landing gear attached to the bottom of his feet. They are die cast too. They help him roll. In this mode, the cockpit opens. I guess we could have opened it in robot mode as well. There's nothing, nothing molded inside at all. But they added striping to the canopy with the foggy, translucent, orange plastic. The missiles launched. But these missiles aren't meant to go in this mode. So let's get these out of here. And he comes with these short missiles right here. And because of safety regulations, instead of being like a uh, half an inch long, they're two inches long. And we put them right in here. And here we go. We got like this long mess. They've been doing this reissue in the United States since the Toys R Us days of early 2000s, like 2002, 2003. But I'm still not used to seeing these horrible missiles. And right here on the box, they show how the missiles are supposed to fit flush. And man, it is such a shame we don't get that. The last feature Skywarp has in this jet mode is you can port in the Megatron gun. Take the gun, there's a peg right here, and this chest vents are conveniently shaped to hold this gun configuration. Just tab it right in there. And this particular moment was done with Starscream in the episode where they fought the Dinobots and Megatron transformed. And it fits right underneath, looks pretty cool, but none of the other jets other than Starscream ever did it. Or you can move it over here and put it into this vent hole right here, and you can keep the landing gear intact. It's not meant to go right here, but you can still do it and you can put it down and still roll on the landing gear and still have clearance with the gun attached. Here is the Generation 1 version of Skywarp and I guess they did go with a little bit of a charcoal black over here. I just wish they had went a little bit further, but it's definitely a different black and it could be just the difference in the vintage and the reissue. I don't have a reissue Skywarp other than this one to speak of. But, and you can see like the haziness to the canopy. Of course they did it in a different orange to kind of make it look more cartoony, but it is not as crystal clear translucent as this. In robot mode, difference between the stickers and the painted on, printed on logos. Nothing on the tail fin back here. We got stickers over here. I'll be back into the robot mode. Gonna bring the generation one back for some comparison. And you can see, and some changes to the stickers makes all the difference in the world. It almost looks like a totally different toy when they put them side by side. I think the gray in the chest really makes it stand out as well. And the all purple in the launchers just gives you a whole new vibe. I really like the purple on the reissue better. The only thing holding this reissue back from being my favorite Skywarp in my collection is the launchers. I can't get past these gigantic missiles. Man, I need a 3D printer that I print my own. Wish the car was still making these figures. You know what I didn't do? I didn't put the two faces side by side. Let's take a look real quick. And again, the paint makes all the difference in the world. <laughs> the vintage one just had this sticker across the face. You can see the molded in detail a lot better on the vintage one, like around the lips and the chin a little bit more. But yeah, the paint, look, it makes all the difference in the world. Why didn't they just do that 30 years ago? So I guess there's nothing left to do but size them up and run them down. This is what Skywarp looks like next to Hot Rod and How. Here he is with Earthrise Skywarp, and I think I want to stick to a theme with this one, so here we go. 
Here is Skywarp with Sky Links. Skywarp next to the Sky Sled. Skywarp and Skywalker. All right, last one. See if you get this one, Transformers fans. This is a deep cut. Skywarp and the Sky Gods. All right, one last thing before I give you my final thoughts. I'm going to put Skywarp next to the cartoon model, of course. Check him out. Now, he looks a lot more like his cartoon model than the other two. Not saying they were bad, but the colors they use and the lack of detail really shows in this guy. Like, the, the wing striping is perfect. The canopy is perfect. Everything is there except for these giant long missiles. And yeah, I'm going to keep saying it. Right now what to my final doing? thoughts on this Generation 1 Transformers, the movie Skywarp Paint Edition. I really like it. I think he's my favorite out of the three pulls off the look the best and again i'm gonna just keep beating it into the ground i wish we could have got the the normal missiles i would have really really have loved this guy really but i i do i do like it it only has two drawbacks and the long missiles which can't be helped that's the whole safety thing and the fact that he comes with the megatron gun over and over for the third time but if this is your first release then it's perfect if you're into g1 transformer collecting and you don't want to pay a ton of money for the original vintage release. This is a great alternative and option for you. If you're on the hunt for this guy, good luck. He's worth the pickup. And that's all I have for you. I want to thank you all for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews where every toy has a story. Right, one last thing I want to talk about here at the end. And no, it's not who became Cyclone, this bombshell of Skywarp. Because we all know that it was Skywarp. Let's get Bombshell out of here. A lot of people think it's Bombshell because of his intelligence factor. But Unicron upgraded everybody. Skywarp literally got an upgrade to Cyclonus. Cyclonus has Skywarp memories I don't want to hear. And I, I do believe at some point that Hasbro or Sunbow confirmed that it was Skywarp and not Bombshell. Because if you want to go by personality and file cards and all that, the Insecticons were not loyal to Megatron slash Galvatron at all. But this is not what I want to talk about. But I do want to talk about the future of the movie line and possibly getting a movie accurate Cyclonus. Cyclonus has never been officially reissued. So hopefully we get one down the line. But I want to talk about is the jet mode being released in the future. And no, I don't mean getting the cone heads down the road. I mean, I know what you're thinking, but I think a little bit outside of the box. I'm thinking about getting from this mold the Ghost of Starscream. I got one open somewhere. I can't find it. But this is my unopened Ghost of Starscream from, I think, um, actually says it right here on the box, from 2001. We got the very, very rare limited release Ghost of Starscream. It was an e-hobby release. And so I want to ask you guys a question. Do you guys think we will see a Ghost of Starscream? I will even accept these long, goofy missiles. Because it will serve to differentiate even further from this version. So I hope in the future we get the Ghost of Starscream from the movie line. Because it's long overdue for a re-release. -re so I was just wondering, what do you guys think? But that's all I have for you this time, for real. And I'm out of here.